Um, thanks, Chanel. Um, so actually, my name is Emma. I'm filling in for Jesse Jennings tonight. She was unable to be here, so I am her fill-in. So I'm going to walk you guys through Painted Ghosts in a Frame tonight. I'm really excited about it. Um, like always, we're going to go over the supply list again, just to make sure that you have everything that you're going to want to have on hand before we get started tonight. Um, and of course, I'm sure you all know, once this event is over, if you need a refresher on anything or you need to touch anything up, then you can, of course, go to Michael's YouTube page and rewatch this at your own leisure in about, you know, 24 to 48 hours. So, um, if we're going a little bit too fast, don't worry. Um, you can always go back and rewatch. So, that's great. And also, Stephen is here with us. So, if you have any questions about um, how a step that you missed or something like that, please feel free to list it in the comment section down below. Um, and Stephen will be looking at all of those and relaying some over to me. So, let's go ahead and get started. I'm really excited to paint with you guys tonight. So, we are going to use. Um, some beautiful folk art acrylic paint. So the colors we're going to use tonight are wicker white, navy blue, violet pansy, and baby pink. Only four colors tonight. We're going to do quite a bit of mixing. <clears throat> You're also, of course, want to have a good uh, variety of paint brushes. And then a little bit of an unconventional surface that we're painting on tonight. We have this really beautiful uh, detailed frame that we got at Michael's. Um, one of my favorite things about Michael's is that they have such a great frame section. So we took that to our advantage tonight. And this is an 11 by 14 frame. And we also called for an 11 by 14 stretched canvas and some um, glue. We like to use tacky glue just because it's really easy cleanup. Uh, and you don't need a super strong adhesive to get the canvas to stick to the back of your frame. So like you see, um, in the back of our original painting, we have a stretched canvas here that we just glued in. But I'm actually going to be working with some canvas, canvas board tonight. And if you're doing that along with me, then you don't even need the glue because you can just um, stick this right in your frame and um, latch it up nice and tight. So um, I think we're ready to get started. So first things first. I'm gonna actually go ahead and insert my canvas board into my frame so that everything is in the right place. Just do a few of these notches so it stays in place. And now we're looking something like this, okay? So if you're working with a stretched canvas, you can just you know put press it in the back. You don't have to gl don't glue it in now, um, just so you get the positioning right. I'll set him there so that we can get a good view of him. But yeah, let us know where you're tuning in from. Um, if you're excited to paint with us tonight, <laughs> we love to hear all that good stuff. So first things we're going to do is we're going to put some of our navy blue onto our palette. And then I'm going to take my um, three quarter inch flat brush. So just whatever medium size flat brush you have. I'm going to dip it in my navy blue. And if you feel most comfortable using some painter's tape or something like that to make a straight line, then feel free to do that. But um, it doesn't have to be super duper straight. So we honestly don't really need to use any paint, or I'm sorry, tape. You, you do need to use paint. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna just make one initial broad stroke on our canvas. Um, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect right away. One initial stroke, just as continuous as you can be, to mark that um, line. One swooping horizontal line is what we want right now. Something like that. And then you can kind of go in and touch it up and make it as straight as you want it to be. Okay? So once you go ahead and do that, the reason we put our canvas into our frame is because we're going to continue that now onto our frame. Oh, 
Okay. And now we're gonna go ahead and paint the bottom half of our frame and our canvas. Make sure you get into all the little nooks and crannies if your frame is ornate like mine. I'm kind of brushing back and forth and back and forth because that allows our bristles to kind of get into some of those um, harder to reach grooves on the frame. even a little bit of kind of um, dabbing perpendicularly into those grooves will help the paint get to where you want it to be. And then when you get to the other side, we're just being mindful to create another sharp line on the other side. Okay, looking good, looking good. Now I'm gonna go into my canvas, <clears throat> excuse me, and paint my canvas as well. Sorry if my head gets in the way. Okay, so once we look like that, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. I'm gonna flip my canvas like this. so that we have better access to the unpainted side. Into my palette, I'm gonna add some baby pink. And I bet you can guess what's coming. Now we're gonna go ahead and repeat that exact process, painting our frame and our canvas with our baby pink, just like we did with our navy blue. And we're still using our um, medium sized three quarter inch flat brush.
uh, let us know in the comment section, guys, if you have gotten into any other um, fun Halloween activities, fall activities, if this is kind of your first um, fall or Halloween activity of the season. Um, I feel like it might be for some of you. Let us know in the comment section or in the chat, rather. Sam says, I did a class, huge and nightlight class the other day. Ooh, that is so cool. Last Fusion Nightlight class. That is sounds so cool. I'm jealous. Lindsay says this is her first project. Oh, exciting. And again, once we kind of meet back with our um, navy blue, we're just going to carefully make another straight line because our blue is probably still a little bit wet and we don't want to dull down our pink, if that makes sense. How are we doing in the comment section, Stephen? Pretty good. Cool. All right, if we want to touch up our pink a little bit, of course, just the nature of a light pink, acrylic paint like this, um, it's going to come go on just a little less opaque than our navy will. So if you want to go ahead and give your pink another coat, feel free to do that. But for time's sake, time's sake tonight, I'm going to keep moving with you guys so you guys get all of the steps and the techniques that you're going to want to know. Sound good? It's good. Okay. Okay, so once our um, frame is looking like this, I am going to rinse my brush and I have a blow dryer with me. So I'm going to blow dry my um, project so it's nice and dry before we move on to our next step. Is the position of the line about a third or two thirds of the? That's a good question. I would say that um, it's a little bit more than a third, like half an inch more than a third. 
But if yours is a third, I think that would still look good, you know, just roughly. And here's a, a good question. What can I do to speed up the drying time if I don't have a hair dryer? That's a good question. So you can stick this in front of a fan if you have like a rotating fan. Um, if you have a heat gun, you can use that as well. Um, or unfortunately, let it air dry. Um, I know we use a blow dryer a lot in our painting classes um, for time's sake. So I hope that's helpful. Okay, so I'm gonna switch my frame back around. And now to my palette, I'm going to introduce some of my wicker white. Okay, and taking my three quarter inch flat brush, I'm gonna create a ratio of about two parts white to one part navy. So I'll show you guys. I'm actually just gonna take a little dollop of my navy because a little bit of this, such a dark color goes a long way. And I'm gonna um, mix this into my wicker white. And you know what, it's a little too light. So I'm gonna add about a little bit more than I did initially of my navy to that mixture. Okay, so now if you have a little bit too much paint on your brush, I know I certainly do, um, go ahead and take a, just a paper towel or a scrap piece of paper and just remove some of that excess paint. We don't want that much paint on our brush right now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to paint the stripes of our um, on our painting here. So we want them to be kind of even. Um, so it's not an exact science. It does not have to be totally perfect, but we just want them to kind of feel um, pretty even. So to make it easier on ourselves, let's start on the flat surface. So I'm gonna start on my canvas here and I'm just pulling down, creating, you know, just as straight of a line as I can get. And, um, you say the name of the colors you've used one more time. Yeah, so it's about a, um, a two part, it's about a ratio of two parts navy to one part wicker white. And you know what, you guys, that might even be a little bit too light. That's the, the beauty of painting sometimes. You don't know until you know, you know? All right, so no worries. I'm just adding a little bit uh, more navy into that. And I'm just gonna go right over what I just did. No rinsing of the brush or anything. All right, and so on my canvas at first, I'm just gonna make those lines as even as I can get it to be. I'm just applying more paint to my brush as I see fit. And now we're gonna continue that line onto our frame.
stripe there, add a stripe here. And what I'm even gonna do, I'm gonna rinse my brush and I'm gonna reach for a smaller flat brush to get into some of these harder to reach spots of my frame. And just following the um, initial line that I made on my canvas, I'm just gonna try to, my best to continue it onto my frame here. Okay, so once you have your stripes going on, I'm gonna rinse my brush again. And now I'm gonna add a little bit more baby pink to my palette and some more wicker white. I'm gonna flip this around. And again, I'm gonna mix another ratio of two parts pink to one part white. So go ahead and rinse off your three quarter inch flat brush, get it nice and dry. And I'm gonna mix up that ratio. Again, two parts pink to one part white. And again, I'm gonna take a paper towel and offload most of that paint, too much paint on our brush. And following the stripes that we just painted with our lighter blue color, we're gonna follow that pattern um, all the way with our light pink color that we just mixed. continuing those stripes.
going on to the frame. And I'm going to switch to my smaller flat brush again, just because it's a little bit easier to manage for me to get into those tighter areas. Okay. We're just about ready for the fun part, painting that sweet little ghost. I'm gonna flip this back over the, the right way around. That's hard to say, say that three times fast. The right way around. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, one more time for the night, I'm going to go ahead and blow dry my um, canvas. All right, once you feel that your painting is nice and dry, um, now we're gonna grab whatever kind of sketching tool you have, um, erasable sketching tool, whether it be a pencil or a piece of chalk. I'm taking a pencil and I'm gonna mark just a little tiny line going about two and a half inches down from the top of my canvas, um, just in the middle there. And I'm gonna, um, Think of that as the top part of my ghost. So with that information, I'm gonna draw a little arch like this, pretty um, even. Like that, okay. And then I'm gonna go down
and we kind of start to flare out at the bottom here. Flaring out. And once you get to this point, we're gonna do the same little marking about, um, about two inches from the bottom. And I'm gonna mark the lowest point of my ghost too, in the middle, okay? So with that lowest point, I'm gonna create a little tiny arch. Move this up so you guys can get a better view. But I made that little tiny arch there, if you can see it, okay? On this side here, I'm going to cut in that way. I'm going to cut in this way. What I mean by that is just, you know, two lines. We kind of fan out here. And then we come back to our arch. And then here, Kind of do another little arch that connects up, and we're going to connect that up as well. Any questions, Stephen? Um, no questions, but can you scoot your ghost over into the frame just a little bit? Yeah. Is that better? Yeah. All right. So, trying to get it so you guys can see that pencil line. Oh, that was kind of good. Yeah. See that pencil line? But it doesn't have to be exact. We're just making a sheet ghost. Okay, so now you can go ahead and erase some of those like extra pencil marks that maybe you don't need. If you did too many like me. Okay. So if you don't have um, much navy blue on your palette, go ahead and add a little bit more navy blue. And I'm gonna take, um, well, it's up to you, whatever you prefer to paint fine lines, whether it be a round brush, a liner brush, a small flat brush, go ahead and grab that. I'm working with just a small little liner brush. I'm gonna take my navy blue and with my navy blue, I am going to follow that sketch that we just made, even going into the pink part. Like so. And if you feel like your paint isn't gliding out as smoothly as mine is, then just add a little bit of water to your brush. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and rinse my brush. And I'm now I'm gonna introduce some more wicker white to my palette. I'm gonna take my medium sized flat brush 
And inside that sketch that we just marked out with our navy paint, we're gonna base coat the uh, inside of our ghost with our wicker white. So one thing to note, when you're kind of coming up to the sides, you see how on our final ghost painting, some of the, you can see some blue peeking out and that really just gives a lot of depth to the painting. So if some of your blue is showing, I honestly prefer that. So, you know, I would kind of play around with it. If you want to have like one edge or one section of your, the edge of your ghost where you're having less navy or more, just play around with it. I'm going to rinse my brush. And now onto our palette, I'm going to add a little bit of the violet pansy, that beautiful purple. And taking a smaller flat brush, I'll show you guys what I'm doing here. Once I get my finger out of my pink paint. Okay, so I'm gonna take some of my white here, put it there, and then I'm gonna dip my 
brush into my purple and just mix just a little bit. I don't, I'm not super worried about it being like totally combined or anything. I'm just looking for a softer purple color. And then go ahead and offload that again. Okay. And I want you guys to try to notice something in your painting. So you see how at the end of our little sheet, it's kind of like the sheet has pleats. Um, you can see in our finished ghost here, the pleats just kind of follow the point or the end of the different shapes that we've created at the bottom of our ghost. Does that make sense, Stephen? Yes. All right, so following that, I'm gonna start from the bottoms. So it's like, I'm starting right here because that's where my pleat starts. I'm gonna hold my brush perpendicular to my canvas and kind of in a curving motion, I'm just sweeping up. And I'm applying more pressure at the beginning of the stroke and less pressure at the end of the stroke. The less pressure that we're applying to our brush, the thinner our width of our line will be. And I'm going to continue that same technique. Following up. like that. And I'm gonna widen out the bottoms here so that the tops look super, super thin. And our bottoms are just a little bit chunkier. Okay, now without even rinsing my brush, I'm just taking my paper towel and I'm trying to get as much of that paint off of it as I can. I'm gonna go into just my white this time. And I'm gonna kind of go over some of those purple lines with my white. So there's not very much white on my brush. And I'm just kind of softening those purple lines that we just made with barely any white on my brush. But I'm following the same um, motion, same stroke direction that we did our purple lines. Kind of like that, all right? So now I'm going to rinse my brush. And I'm going to take a pretty tiny flat brush. This is a number two flat brush. And I'm going to go in with my navy blue now. I don't want to have too much paint on my brush. I'll show you guys how my brush looks. Not much paint on my brush. And now, not quite as high as we went in with our um, purple. We're going to start a little bit lower. And we're going to follow those lines, but lower. Like that. So once you get to that point, I'm going to follow the same motion that I just made those navy lines with, but almost like I'm kind of offloading the paint from my brush. 
I now at this point, I barely have any paint on my brush. And I'm just going to the side here and offloading that paint. So, you know, our finished result ends with us leaving barely any paint. It's looking pretty good, you guys. We are almost done. Continuing with that really tiny flat brush, feel free to go ahead and sketch out the eyes and the mouth of your ghost with a pencil or a piece of chalk. But if you're feeling bold, I am, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint my face. So our mouth is about the size of, hmm, like a coffee bean. And then our eyes are about the size of like a kidney bean. Hope you guys know your beans. But in reality, you know, just just do it what you think looks right. We want, we do want those eyes to be fairly symmetrical. See, mine wasn't right away. Lump up the other side. You can always make the eyes bigger, but you can't make them smaller. So start small and if you need to adjust, adjust. Hmm. What should we name him? He kind of looks like a Franklin. I think Franklin's good. Yeah, let us know in the chat if you're going to name your ghost. We'd love to know his name, his or her name. Um. Okay, so there's one thing left to do, and that's, of course, we need to sign our painting. So take a liner brush or a small flat brush, a round brush, whatever you like to use to create fine lines and pick um, a semi-light color. So I'm gonna go for my pink. If you wanna go for your light purple or the white, add a little bit of water if your paint has dried a little bit. And in the bottom right corner, we are going to sign our painting. so that everybody knows that you created this beautiful work of art. Any cool ghost names, Steven? Let's see. Uh, we have Felix, Fred, uh, Boo. Love them, very creative. Yeah. I think Felix is my favorite. And uh, I have one last question, is it Navy in the eyes and the mouth? Yes, that is Navy that we use, yes. <laughs> Okay, you guys, so thank you so much for painting along with us tonight. I hope that you had a wonderful time. I hope that you learned a lot. Again, if you decide to post your works of art on social media, make sure to hashtag learn with Michaels, make it with Michaels, Michaels classes, and hashtag plaid crafts. Um, we would love to see what you guys um, created tonight. And of course, don't forget, you can always go back and rewatch this on Michaels YouTube channel about 24 to 48 hours after our class tonight. So I hope you have a wonderful Halloween. Um, thank you one more time. Thank you, Michaels, for allowing us to be with you tonight. And we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.